Hello and welcome to Driver's Therapy. Today we're going to be talking about the ASC A5 brakes test. Now guys, I passed. Yes, I'm so excited because that is one step closer to the overall goal of becoming a master tech. Now that's one down and seven to go, but I am super excited. Now in this video, we're gonna be talking about my testing experience. We're gonna be talking about how the test went. I can't give you know particulars or go into detail because I signed that fine print that I can't discuss that. But I'm gonna be talking about kind of like the subject areas that you should be looking at and that you should be studying in. And then we're gonna be talking about the study guide, some of the tips and tricks I use to kind of get prepared for this test. So without further ado, let's kick it off. Okay guys, so let's talk about the testing experience. Now I haven't taken a test in a long time. I'm not trying to show my age, but we didn't have all this fancy technology that we do now in testing centers. I kind of felt like I went through like a higher end version of a TSA experience. Okay, because when you walk in, you have to read the sign and have all these rules. Um, you know, they make you empty out your pockets. They do a metal detector. You have to put everything in the locker and you have to keep a, you know, you have to show them your ID. And then while they were doing that and talking to me, I kind of glanced back and the administrators were looking at these computer screens and with all these cameras and, and it was pretty intense. But at the same time, I was a little bit excited because I was, haven't gone through this in a while. And I was like, oh, but it added a little bit to the nervousness. Now, I'm sure you guys are already experienced this or this is kind of the norm in school now but it was new for me so once i got into the computer and i went through all that security check for the test tsa i sat down and i had 30 minutes to complete 23 questions now that's going to be for the recertification test for a normal test it's going to be a little bit longer it's probably going to be between 40 to 60 questions and you're going to have about an hour or more to do that so i started off with test and let's go ahead and tell you about some of, about the subject fields and what I experienced in the test. Now, doing some studying and just having some hands-on experience for years on brakes really helped out with the test. I mean, a lot of this stuff, a lot of the questions, if you've done a brake job or you've done many of them, if you've interacted with brake pads, rotors, brake fluid, then a lot of this stuff is gonna become second nature. But some of the things that kind of catch you is that I really think it was important learning about measurements and understanding to how, what type of tools to understand like rotor lateral run out, understanding dial indicators, knowing drum thickness and bell housing and just a lot of things as far as terminology goes when understanding if a rotor or drum is serviceable or not. So it's really good to understand that stamp measurement on, um, on rotors and, and drums and understanding how to look at that and everything else. So I thought that was really good. Another thing too is understanding how to diagnose problems, uh, you know, different pedal conditions. I think that's really an important key. The, to the study guide really helped me with that, understanding a spongy pe pedal or a hard pedal, and just understanding what's the possible cause of that. Uh, now, one thing that really caught me by surprise, and it makes sense because we are in 2020, is that there was a little bit of questions uh, as far as the new technology and new electronics and brakes. Now, if we think about it, ABS has been in brakes for a long time and in traction control and all those. So a lot of those things are electronically controlled. They use wheel sensors and you know all kinds of things. But in today's world, we have autonomous vehicles like level one, two, and three, and they utilize a lot of these inputs. A lot of these components are now utilized in a braking system. You know, they, they control brakes, they could stop your car automatically. So there's a lot more electronics in cars than ever. Now, I typically work in 90 JDM cars and other vehicles, so I don't have a huge extensive experience on these new vehicles, but I kind of like that they did have that because that is what it's in the road now. So there was some questions as far as like hybrid vehicles and also like brake simulation systems. And I really didn't know that. I really didn't, under like I, I had a brief understanding Understanding about it, but in the same time, having a background in avionics and the military and understanding electrical troubleshooting, that really helped me out. But I would really recommend that you guys just understand how the hybrid uh, brake systems work, how a brake simulation system works. You don't have to get into like engineering level, you just have to understand how they work and then utilize your overall brake knowledge to combine that and give you a better understanding. I think that's gonna really pay off. Overall, I think if you've been working on brakes, if you get a study guide, you'll be fine. Now I bought the study guide on um, 
on Amazon for $20 and I really liked it. It had six uh, prep tests and I took them all and in the front there was an introduction and this is what I did and I think it helped a lot. So what I did is I read the whole introduction, a lot of the stuff I knew but it was just good to get uh, well versed with it and then I took the test but when I was taking the test this is what I did. If I ran into a question that I think I was right but I really want to do some further studying I would write the word read next to it. And what that would tell me later is that no matter what, if I got it right or wrong, that I should read more into it so I could understand that subject more. The second thing I would do is if I didn't know anything, like if I was like, man, I don't even know the answer to this and I'm just kind of like, whatever, you know, just pick a, pick a, pick a letter. Um, I would write a question mark and that meant like, I need to do some serious studying on this. And so what I would do is when I was done, it would really help me out because I would find out that I was actually on track. A lot of the read or a lot of the question marks, I'd get them wrong, but sometimes I would get them right. And I think that's where that helped me out is because if I wouldn't have wrote, uh, wrote that, I would have gotten that question by luck and I would have gone back and researched it and then I could have got it wrong later. So what I did is when I researched it, they give you a brief explanation about it. I think it's nice. I'd write it down. But if I really wanted to learn more about that subject, I would go on YouTube and I'd watch long videos about it. Like uh, here's an example. I really didn't know a lot about proportioning and metering valves. So I went on YouTube and I saw this long video and it was quite entertaining. And I learned a lot about metering valves and proportioning valves. So that really helped me out. So at the end of the day, when I did all that together and did all the study and I completed all six, I really felt a lot more confident about it. The only thing is I wasn't passing them like flying colors. So I was a little bit nervous about it. But Elise was telling me, cause she's an amazing test taker. She's telling me that sometimes study guards or study guides are supposed to be hard than actual tests that kind of get you prepared and to make you pass instead of barely pass. Hopefully that was true, but in that case, I, you know, I it was barely passing, but I passed the test pretty well. I passed 18 out of 23 and I'm happy about that. Well guys, if you have any questions and if you already know how I am, I love answering comments and I'm more than willing to help you out. If you need any more help or anything like that, I'll put this, uh, I'll put this study guide on the link below. And, uh, and if you guys are taking your AC test or thinking about it, I highly recommend doing it and, uh, and, and go out there and kick some butt. Well, thanks for watching this video guys. We really appreciate it. You guys stay safe and we'll talk to you soon.